I know that Marvel hasn't exactly been producing quality films and series. Lately, Marvel's been... eh. So people are so worried about watching a new Marvel movie or show just to be utterly disappointed. However, despite the dip in quality in their recent films and series, one series was absolutely phenomenal, and that is Loki. Loki Season 1 was very interesting, because I was actually curious to know what happened to the Loki that escaped with the Tesseract. But it was the second season of Loki that really amazed me. It was so good. I was absolutely speechless. I literally just sat there with my mouth open after watching the finale. And after finally processing what just had happened, I realized that the Loki we grew familiar with was totally different from the Loki we knew in Marvel's Loki. I was like, wait, this is Loki from Avengers? It's like I couldn't recognize him. He was a totally different person. Or God. Of course, the original Loki also grew. But he underwent a different experience for his growth. And I asked myself, what did the original Loki experience again? So of course, that calls for another rewatch. And I thought to myself, this is a good idea for a video. So here it is. Hi, I'm Zidney. And this is Loki versus Loki. As I list down each milestone one Loki achieves, this is not me saying that one Loki is better than the other. This is just me listing down their commonalities and differences. And if it's not yet obvious, this video contains so many spoilers. Go watch Marvel's Loki before watching this video. Okay, let's do this. Before we actually begin to compare their different achievements and experiences, let's first discuss what they have in common. After all, they were the same person and went through the same things before one event that split their timelines into two. Found as a baby by Odin Abandoned by his father Lofi, Loki was a baby frost giant when he was found by Odin during an invasion of the realm of the frost giants in Jufenheim. Odin then raised him as a son alongside Thor. Sabotage Thor's ascent to the throne Loki had always felt that he should be given the throne. So when Thor was about to ascend to the throne, he used the frost giants and manipulated his brother, causing Thor to be exiled to Earth, and therefore Loki becoming the temporary ruler of Asgard. Died the first time. Fell into the abyss. Long story short, Thor came back to Asgard and to stop Loki from completely destroying the frost giants, he decided to destroy the Bifrost. In the process of destroying the Rainbow Bridge, both he and Loki slipped. But fortunately, Odin woke up to get a hold of the two brothers. However, Loki decided to let go and he fell into the abyss. And this made Thor think that his brother died. Invaded New York Surprise, surprise! Loki was not really dead, as we also saw from the end credits. Thor just thought he did. Loki conspired with Thanos to invade Earth got traumatized by the Hulk. One of my favorite moments in the Avengers movie is when Hulk just threw Loki back and forth. <laughs> Love you, Loki. <laughs> but that was like the highlight of the movie. Captured by the Avengers Loki, of course, got defeated and got captured by the Avengers. Now we're at the point where the timeline will soon diverge into two. But for now, we will look at the original Loki we know. So let's continue. Avenge his mother's death. In the second installment of Thor, Loki's mother Frigga got killed and being Loki's favorite family member, he teamed up with Thor to avenge their mother's death. Betrayed Thor. Loki has a reputation of betraying Thor, and when Thor and Loki face Malekith, Loki seemed to betray Thor, even cutting off his hand. But then it was all a ploy to trick Malekith to collect the ether from Jane. Died a second time. Unfortunately, their small victory came with a price as Loki died for a second time. Ruled Asgard as fake Odin Loki is truly the god of mischief because he faked his death so that he could pretend to be Odin and rule Asgard while Thor was free to stay on Earth. Fell for 30 minutes However, Loki's ruse came to an end as Thor knew his brother all too well. When they came to Earth to find Odin, Doctor Strange magically confined Loki and let him fall for 30 minutes. 
I have been falling for 30 minutes. Met his sister. When the brothers found their father, Odin told them that he had a daughter before Thor. And when Odin died, they met their sister, Hela, the goddess of death. Befriended the Grandmaster of Sakaar. When Hela attacked the brothers while teleporting to Asgard, they ended up in Sakaar. However, Loki got there a few weeks earlier and gained the Grandmaster's trust. Triggered his trauma. As Loki watched Thor meet the champion of Sakaar, he also saw his trauma. Hulk. Got help. My favorite joke in Thor Ragnarok was Thor and Loki getting help. Betrayed Thor. Once again, Loki showed us that he's truly the god of mischief, because he just couldn't resist betraying Thor. But Thor knew better, so he got electrocuted instead. Reconciled with his brother. Long story short, Loki helps Thor start Ragnarok, and the two brothers finally reconcile. Died for real. The beginning of Infinity War was so grim. Actually, the whole movie was so... <sighs> I knew what was coming, so I didn't want to watch the whole thing again. But at the beginning of Infinity War, we see Thanos strangle Loki, and Loki dies. For real this time. And that's the end of Avengers Loki. Now let's go back to what happened to the Avengers by going back to Endgame and see what happens for the timeline to split into two, creating a variant of Loki. Got away. During the Avengers time heist, Loki escaped with the Tesseract. But that wasn't supposed to happen. So the Time Variance Authority, an organization that protects the sacred timeline, arrests Loki. Zap back to time a lot. Loki, being Loki, has a tendency to escape a lot. But his magic was no match for the TVA's power. So he gets zapped back to time a lot because he tries to escape a lot. Met his BFF. Loki hadn't realized this yet when he first met Mobius. But he just met his best friend. Saw his entire life. To get Loki to help the TVA, Mobius showed Loki his misdeeds, but especially how Loki indirectly caused his mother's demise. This shook and confused Loki, but after circling around the TVA trying to find a way out, he came back to the interrogation room to look at his life and he saw his entire life. Worked with the TVA. In order to prevent getting pruned, and after learning that his life was eventually going to end anyway, Loki decided to help the TVA to find a variant Loki who keeps attacking the TVA's Minutemen. Met a variant of himself. Loki finally meets the variant Loki who keeps disrupting the TVA's missions, and he finds that he is actually a she who named herself Sylvie. Fell in love with himself. After talking and fighting each other during an apocalypse, the two Lokis ended up falling for each other, causing a Nexus event. Learn the secrets of the TVA. Loki realized that the Timekeepers probably kidnapped the TVA agents when Sylvie told Loki that the TV agents were also just variants. And when they arrived at the Timekeepers' chambers, they found out that they're just robots. Met other variants of himself. After discovering that the Timekeepers were just androids, Loki got pruned and ended up in the void where he meets other variants of himself. Met He Who Remains At the Citadel at the end of time, Sylvie and Loki finally meet the true creator of the TVA and the true guardian of the sacred timeline, He Who Remains. And even though He Who Remains explained the possible outcome of killing him, Sylvie still decides to kill He Who Remains. Time slipped. And actually, before killing He Who Remains, Sylvie used He Who Remains' tempad to kick Loki back to the TVA. This caused Loki to begin to time slip, and Mobius described it as, It's terrible. It looks like you're being born or dying or both at the same time. It's really, it's freaking me out. It's okay. It's, okay. it's okay. really painful. It's not that bad. Became a genius. Because Sylvie killed He Who Remains, the sacred timeline began to branch out, and the temporal loom couldn't hold all the timelines, so the team had to widen the temporal loom. The gang was too late though, and everyone turned to spaghetti. This led Loki to master time slipping, and he tried several times to save the branches, the TVA, and all his friends. And in the process of trying again and again, Loki becomes a genius in physics and engineering. Became the god of stories. 
However, because the timelines are branching infinitely, there's not a single temporal loom big enough to handle the infinite branches. Loki decides to make the ultimate sacrifice by destroying the loom and becoming the loom himself, and therefore making Loki the new guardian of the infinite timelines and the god of stories. From the very moment we saw Loki, he quickly stole our hearts. And even though he was a villain, we knew that he was destined for greatness. We knew that there was good in him. Even Thor knew this. Loki, I thought the world of you. I thought we were going to fight side by side forever, but at the end of the day, you're you and I'm me. And I don't know, maybe there's still good in you, but let's be honest, that path diverged a long time ago. See, Loki, life is about, it's about growth, it's about change, but you seem to just want to stay the same. I guess what I'm trying to say is that you'll always be the god of mischief, but you could be more. Plus, a major factor why we love Loki is because he's played by the very charming Tom Hiddleston. That's why I'm really glad that Marvel finally made a Loki-centered story. I was really happy that we finally got to see Loki being on Thor's side in the original timeline. But in Marvel's Loki, they were able to give Loki the spotlight he deserved. In the first Thor movie, Loki said that he never wanted a throne. He only wanted to be Thor's equal. And at first, I never really understood what he meant because he kept lying and betraying others to sit on a throne. So maybe he really did want a throne. But then when he came to the TVA and met all of his friends, all of that power seemed insignificant. And how tragically ironic it was that when Loki finally resented a throne, he had to sit in one all by himself in order to keep his friends safe. Loki has truly come a long way. Thank you, Tom, for the 14 years of playing our mischievous but lovable god. For you. For all of us. Hey guys, I don't know if you've heard it from my voice, but I am sick, and I've been sick for a couple of days now. I didn't want to record the audio for this video, but, you know, I have a schedule to keep. I even bought a new mic and all. Anyways, um, go watch Loki, and I'll catch you all next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time. I said that already. <laughs> I'm really sick. Okay, bye!